Hello, everyone. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Huang Zilin, and I'm from uh, LFK UITB team. And okay, today I would like to share uh, our experience while we developing custom stickers, especially on the custom elements. Uh, okay, what is custom element uh, stickers? It's a, a new type of stickers that users create unique stickers. They just enter their name or custom text into the caption. And after they purchase these stickers, they can enter as many times as they like. So uh, in order to create these kind of stickers, we need to uh, provide a CMS for designers to design the textile uh, editing features. Uh, so, but th th this is dedicated for in-house designer and third-party designers at first. And uh, in a very high level view, this is how custom stickers were behind the scene. Uh, designers create a textile in SVG format and we store it in LimeShop servers. So after user uh, after user purchase the stickers, they enter the customized text and line shop servers render the stickers with uh, in a PNG format and send it back to users. So, but that is only for official uh, custom stickers, but we all have a lot of uh, external creators. And so line creators market also need to provide this text editing features. So, uh, this is how line, currently Line Creators Market, their uh, custom seeker editing uh, page. It looks pretty much exactly the same as uh, the custom seeker CMS. So the only dif difference is that uh, this is open to uh, public to all creators. So that from both screenshot, we can see that there are some common parts uh, we can share in Custom Seeker CMS and uh, Line Creators Market. And for example, the text, uh, I call it Custom Text Editor and some other form controls. Okay, so that's the actual Custom Text Editor we, we, we create. You can see that uh, with this editor, uh, designers can design the text, uh, the fonts, uh, the text size, and the border and, uh, and the layout of the text. So as you can see, it's kind of complicated. So because the user interaction is somewhat complicated, so it's better not to, uh, it's better make it componentized and reusable because uh, reinventing wheel is not very wise. And uh, while we do these componentized things, we have to consider several things. One is uh, it has to be a common technology among modern browsers. And the second one is uh, modern front-end development is hardly done without front-end frameworks. So it's better to easy to integrate with other front-end frameworks. Okay, so that's why we choose custom elements. Uh, uh, what are custom elements? Uh, I quote some words from a blog post of GitHub. Uh, they call, it's a component library native to the browsers. That means uh, if you use a, a user, don't need to download any additional bytes of framework for uh, to run it. And uh, there's a website called webcomponents.org on the second row. They list the compatibility of custom elements on all modern browsers. As you can see, Chrome, uh, Safari, Firefox, they all support custom elements already. And, but even if, uh, but the other one is Edge is still developing this, but uh, even if Edge couldn't support custom elements, we, ha we still have polyfill. And one good news is Edge gonna release a new uh, stable version on 2020, January for, uh, 15, uh, with fully support of custom elements, okay? Uh, on the other hand, we also have to consider uh, framework compatibility. Uh, there's, there's another website called customelementseverywhere.com. Uh, they design 30 tests against uh, frameworks to test if this framework works well with uh, custom elements. 
And because creator, creators market, they heavily adopt Vue.js. So we major, our major concern is if custom elements works well with Vue.js. And in fact, it works really well. Uh, and besides that, actually custom work well with a lot of more uh, foreign frameworks like Angular, Svelte. Okay, so how to develop custom elements because we don't have enough time to introduce that. So I'll suggest you go check out the uh, MDN or Google documentation about how to write custom elements. Okay, but uh, I would like to tell you more about the uh, benefits it brings us. Uh, there are majorly three things. Reusability, uh, with custom elements, we can encapsulate and reuse the complicated UI logic in vanilla JS. And second one is interoperability. Uh, uh, especially to improve uh, interoperability among modern browsers. And extendability is if current HTML element is not uh, sufficient for your needs, you can extend it with custom elements. Okay, I'll show you real example about how we, uh, how custom elements uh, benefit us with these three, three things. One is name stickers. A uh, name sticker editor. The second is two tone slider, and last one is graphic inputs. Okay, name sticker editor is the actual the custom text editor I mentioned before. As you can see, the UI logic is kind of complicated, and uh, in fact, to use this, you just simply put the script in your HTML page, and uh, put the HTML tag name sticker editor with necessary attribute, and to use it, that's it. And in, and as, because it's also custom element is also part of the uh, DOM elements, so you can query in DOM tree, and you can assign properties, you can invoke methods, you can register event listener and put it back into DOM tree. It look, I mean, it, it just everything just feel like a regular DOM elements. So with this simple step, you can use this name sticker editor. Uh, very simple because it uh, encapsulate the complicated UI logic for you. Okay, the next one is two tone sliders. Uh, if you have ever tried to customize range type input, you know it's very difficult because there's no CDO, uh, CSS pseudo selectors for this part. Uh, the, le the left part, I call it progress. Uh, on Chrome, there's no pseudo selector to, to let you select this part, so it's impossible to create a beautiful slider with progress bar on Chrome. But we decided to re-implement this in a custom element, call it two-tone sliders. It's the actual two-tone slider we created. So as you can see, uh, while it scroll, the progress bar has different color from the track bar. The, and it works on Chrome, Firefox, Safari, any browsers that bring us interoperability. Okay, the last one is graphic input. Uh, it's kind of complicated, but I've mentioned that. Uh, in a text type input, uh, every browser calculates ca uh, characters differently, especially for non-BMP characters. And a lot of language in South Asia, South Asia, sorry, South Asia and Southeast Asia, they heavily use non-BMP characters. For example, Thai language. Uh, this table summarize one of the scenario. So in order to enhance this text type input elements, we extend it with custom elements and uh, we utilize a library called uh, graphene sp splitter and they help us do the, do, the, do the math to calculate text. As you can see on the left side is the graphemic input. It calculate this Thai language, Thai uh, words in correct way. The other on the right side is the regular input. Okay, so it uh, provides extendability and interoperability. Okay, uh, the most important takeaway is first, custom element is the browser native component library. And second, it compatible with modern browser and most foreign frameworks. The last is it brings us reusability, interoperability, and extendability. That's it. Thank you.